This is Nabil al Motasib. I'm the director of the UT Health Audiology with the UT uh, Medical School and the UT Physicians of uh, Houston. Um, uh, I would like first to thank uh, Memorial Herman for the opportunity to allow me to convey to you some information about the hearing loss and hearing aids in uh, our um, area. It's one of the sad facts that we have around 25 million Americans who are suffering from hearing loss. And only around 4 million are seeking medical help to overcome this silent problem. And according to the Better Hearing Institute survey, you will be surprised to know that 3 in 10 people over the age of 60 have a hearing problem. And 1 in 6 baby boomers, which the age of 41 to 59, have hearing loss. 1 in 14 young ages age 29 to 40 years have hearing loss. And at least 1.4 million children under the age of 18 have hearing problems. And it's interesting uh, to point out that an estimated three out of a thousand infants are born with serious to profound hearing loss. I would like to uh, comment about the signs of hearing loss. Over my years of work as a director of the UT Health Audiology and before that with uh, director of uh, Health Audiology at uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, I found that the most common signs of hearing loss are asking for repetition. You will ask, you know, the individual who is talking to you, what? You keep asking, saying, what, what, what did you say, what did you say, or you try to keep excuses to yourself that they are mumbling. This is another sign of hearing loss. Uh, difficulty understanding women or children voices. Difficulty understanding people in noisy environments, in restaurants and parties and needing the TV to be at a higher volume to understand what's being said. And even though you turned it higher than usual, still you cannot understand some words. Among the other signs are ringing in the ears, thinking that, they, that people are mumbling, you know, answering or responding inappropriately. He asked you or she asked you a question and you responded with something else because you misunderstood what had been said. Feeling exhausted and strained, you know, from listening intently, trying to understand what had been said. And at the end, because of the building of these signs and symptoms, it ends up with trying to withdraw from social situations and isolation. And again, as a director of the UT Health Audiology with the UT Medical School and UT Physicians, I saw many cases who are suffering from depression over the years because of their lack of communication properly because of the hearing loss, which was unnoticed. Now I'd like to move on into common causes of hearing loss and I will start in children. As you know, most children have otitis media, which is a simple middle ear infection and fluid collection in the middle ear. Number two, there are genetic factors. Number three, intrauterine infections, you know, like rubella and cytomegalovirus prematurity, toxemia during pregnancy, anoxia, which is deficiency of oxygen for infants, 
measles and mumps, influenza, meningitis, which is inflammation around uh, the covering of the brain. Among the causes of hearing loss in adults, Autosclerosis, of course, this is a medical term, but autosclerosis, it is stiffening in the middle ear bones. There are three tiny bones in the middle ear in which they become like stiff and they don't move with the sound pressure and that lead to hearing loss. Meniere's disease, again, I'm sure that many of you heard about it. It is an autoimmune disease which affects the inner ear and causing a progressive hearing loss uh, among people affected with this disease. One of the most common causes of hearing loss in adults we see also, autotoxic drugs. Autotoxic drugs, it means those therapeutic drugs which we use to treat either cancer or severe infection. Many of these are very toxic to the inner ear structure, causing hearing loss of sudden onset. What I mean by sudden onset is over two to three week period of taking the medication. One of the other causes, noise exposure, and then other one, acoustic neuroma, which is a type of benign growth, which start in the, inside the inner ear canal and start pressing on the nerve of hearing and the hearing will start gradually progressing to be worsen and worsen till complete loss of hearing if untreated. Head injury, another factor, and press because which is uh, the loss of hearing as we grow older and older above the age of 60. As I mentioned earlier, and again, as director of the UT Health Audiology with the UT Medical School and within the Memorial Hermann system, I found many of my patients, you know, uh, telling me stories about the implications or what I call it the complications of hearing loss in which you will feel irritable, tired, tense, embarrassed, nervous, become isolated, try to withdraw from social situations or try to be quiet during conversation between friends, have difficulty following conversations and answering inappropriately have difficulty hearing in noisy situations. And the most important and the last is the decreased psychological and overall health. When you feel that you cannot share conversations, this is the social life and this is the quality of life which we are looking at. And the types of hearing evaluation, if someone has question about how to evaluate hearing, it is simple. Uh, we have hearing screening, you know, this is a simple pure tone testing for, for, for frequencies, which will give me an idea if there is a hearing loss, which will lead us to suggest for further evaluation by a specialist or an audiologist or uh, audiologist, you know, this is the hearing tinnitus and balance specialist. The, the audiologist will do actually a comprehensive hearing or audiological examination, including the ear, including the middle ear pressure and the middle ear functions, and including the hearing. Of course, on contrary to the complications or implications of the hearing loss, we will have the benefits of amplification which is to amplify with either assistive listening devices or hearing aids or uh, cochlear implant. All of these uh, will improve all the factors which I just mentioned.
Amplification consists of assistive listening devices, which are common and are present in the market anywhere. Uh, those are a simple, basic uh, amplifying devices. Now we are coming to a digital hearing aids, which is the most sophisticated uh, method of treatment for hearing loss. And then the cochlear implants, and then a bone anchored hearing solutions. These are various ways of amplification. And of course, each one of them has its indications. And over the years, as I uh, said earlier, you know, I saw many patients in which uh, they needed assistive listening devices or hearing aids or cochlear implants or bone anchored or implantable hearing aids each depends on certain indications and contraindications and as i told you over the years uh, the audiologist and the ear nose throat specialists both of them will decide which one will be appropriate for your condition as you can see now in front of you a picture about various styles and types of hearing aids and I will start with the smallest hearing aids that's what they call it CIC or complete in the canal hearing aid and then this is an open ear canal hearing aid I will not go into deep details or technical details just to give you an idea about the shapes of the hearing aids the digital hearing aids this is again a tiny uh, CIC or complete in the canal in which it goes deep in the ear. Those types behind the ear hearing aids and some people they call it open ear canal because it ends with a tube and an open tip which goes inside the ear which makes the sound more of a natural variety because there is no blockage like those one will create. And this is the different styles of hearing aid, how they look on the patient. This is the hearing aid, as you notice. It is behind the ear, hidden behind the ear. And then there is a tube connected to an earpiece, which will be inserted into the ear canal. This one again, it's a behind the ear hearing aid. You cannot see the hearing aid here because it is tiny and small. By the way, nowadays a new technology of digital hearing aids appear uh, it's not like the old idea of a big behind the ear hearing aids, but they are very tiny, small behind the ear. As you can see, barely you can see anything behind the ear. And there is a small white tube which will go deep into the ear canal here. So barely you can see anything in this ear. And then we come here. This is the one which I talked about before, the CIC or complete in the canal. You can see how it goes inside the ear canal and barely it can be seen from outside. This one, it is what we call in the ear hearing aid, which fills the ear and it's more apparent uh, from outside. This is another variety in the ear, but it is smaller than the one before. So you can see various styles of hear availability of uh, hearing aids. We talked about those different types of hearing aids and now the most import important is what we call the oral, oral rehabilitation. 
Now, about the hearing aids and digital hearing aids and cochlear implant and so on, you may ask me a question about which uh, I saw many in the newspaper, you know, this is 1,000, this is 10,000, this is $5,000 hearing aids, which is better, you know. But actually, uh, the best is, as I said before, the one which will be decided by the audiologists and the ear, nose, throat specialist in collaboration, because the ear, nose, throat specialist will exclude medical problem which can be corrected and then you may not need a hearing aid. After this uh, ear, nose, throat specialist will clear the way, then the audiologist will come in and he will assess your condition, your hearing condition, and a de design a program for your rehabilitation. That's what we call oral rehabilitation and it's part of the hearing aid sale process. You know, they call it, they sell hearing aid online, they sell hearing aids in various shops and so on. But I believe that uh, fitting the hearing aids by professionals uh, like the audiologist and the ear, nose, throat specialists will be the best because it encompasses oral rehabilitation in which we deal with hearing loss as a whole of the human being condition of the quality of life in which we teach the patient how to adjust to this digital hearing aid, how to overcome various communication difficulties. Because as you know, when you have a hearing loss for 20 years, you forgot how sounds look like. And when you start wearing those digital hearing aids, if an experienced individual does not walk you through rehabilitation process, which may take up to a year, then you will be in a mess. And you will think that everything you hear is background noise. But in reality, it is the sounds which you missed and you forgot for years of the hearing loss. And just as an example, and as a director of the UT Health Audiology with the UT Medical School and UT Physicians, I remember a case of a patient, young guy, 17 years, who lost his hearing when he was nine years old. And of course, he grew up with hearing from one ear. He cannot localize sounds from where they are coming. He cannot understand if someone is talking on his uh, deaf side. And after we fitted him with a special digital hearing aid, his whole life changed, as he described to me. And his performance and ability in the school and his communication status with friends and family improved dramatically. And his parents, I mean, came many times to thank for what we did for this patient. Thank you very much for listening to our uh, presentation today, and I think I am ready for any questions. Arvil, uh, your question, how do you schedule an appointment for testing? And actually, you can go online and you can go to various sites of the American Academy of Audiology or to the American Speech Language Hearing Association or Texas Academy of Audiology. And just you click an audiologist in your zip code area and it will give you uh, the one who is available uh, near, you, near you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Cody, uh, about your question, do any companies make intrinsically safe hearing aids? I understood from your question, intrinsically, it means inside the ear uh, or inside the ear structure even. 
and yes ma'am uh, it's being approved by fda for cochlear implants to be implanted inside the cochlea inside the ear through a surgical procedure by a surgical specialist uh, otolaryngologist or ear nose throat specialist as well as there are implantable hearing aids through the middle ear and from behind the ear in which they implanted a piece in the bone of the ear surgically again by ear nose throat specialist surgeon and then the audiologist will follow on those cases thank you Okay, that's a very important question. What level of hearing loss do you recommend getting hearing aids? Actually, always as uh, expertise in the field of audiology for 21 years now, I can tell you the answer in a very easy way. When you start asking people questions to repeat what they said, it means most probably you have hearing loss with that degree which need intervention and help by an audiologist. That's as simple as this my answer. Thank you. BG, if you have been told you have nerve damage, can this be addressed with a hearing aid? Yes, this is important part of your question, actually. Uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it used to be a statement that if you have nerve damage, nothing can be done and you have to live with it. Nowadays, this is a part of the history. And if you have nerve damage, yes, sir, you can be helped with uh, the advanced technology available and uh, about the costs you ask about the costs typically run actually uh, I, I the cost is variable you know and it ranges uh, between like a thousand it goes up to around six seven thousand you know it's like uh, different types of cars you know in which you can buy a car with uh, $20,000 and you can buy a car with $100,000 and then you ask yourself what's the difference and the same is applicable to the hearing aids. Thank you. For Sylvia, you know, about insurance pay for the implants, uh, I think in most of the circumstances, most insurances will cover uh, the, the cochlear implants once it's medically indicated. What I mean by medically indicated, that the case had been examined and seen by ear, nose, throat physician and by an audiologist and both agreed the candidacy for cochlear implants, uh, the insurance will pay uh, for that in most of the cases, as far as I know. Thank you. For Cody, uh, about a person having hearing loss in one ear, is it necessary to have a hearing aid in each ear? 
not of course if a person has a hearing loss in one ear then he can be fitted or she can be fitted with one hearing aid however there is a system here which I don't want you to get confused with, which is called cross system, contralateral routing of signal, in which there will be a microphone, but it looks like a hearing aid, in which will be placed in the healthy ear, and another hearing aid will be placed in the bad ear. And the one in the good ear will transfer the sound to the other ear. That's what they call cross system. It is not two hearing aids. It's only one hearing aid, but the other one in the good ear is the uh, microphone, which will pick the sound and give the directionality for that patient. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you again for uh, your uh, thanking me for the clear answer. Always I try to do that with uh, all my patients. Uh, over my years of experience and work in the field of hearing balance and tinnitus, you know, I used to hear this sentence and uh, la lastly, uh, lately, uh, yes, just yesterday, one of my patients here with the UT Health Audiology uh, told me that, hey, doctor, I understand you much more than my friends or family. I told him because I speak clearly, I pronounce clearly, I talk slowly, I look at the eye of the person, and that's what uh, makes me understandable by patients, even with my accent. Thanks again for your appreciation. Sylvia, uh, about your question, what about the STEM procedure? Uh, would you mind explain to me what do you mean by STEM procedure? Is it, do you mean brain STEM procedure or not? Thank you. Yes, BJ, uh, again, thank you very much uh, for your comment and for appreciation of my presentation. Thank you. Cody, uh, it is not dangerous to wear hearing aids in a flammable environment. It's exactly like wearing eyeglasses. It's the same, with the same danger. So uh, I don't see any uh, special uh, danger by wearing hearing aids. On contrary to that, wearing hearing aids may help you hear the uh, signs uh, may help you hear the siren or the sounds of warning from other people if you have hearing loss. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia, for your explanation about the esteem. It is as expect as I expected you know 
this is a brain stem implantable uh, device in which it will be implanted in the brain stem and connected uh, through fibers to the uh, hearing nerves. Uh, yes, it's been done, and but I, I think, as far as I know, it's not been approved yet by the FDA in the United States, as far as I know. Thank you for your question. I hope that this uh, presentation was helpful in identifying the hearing loss for patients who are having this problem. And I ask them just one question. Let us face the truth and ask ourselves, do we ask people to repeat themselves or not? If we ask this question to ourselves and we are honest in answering it, then seek the advice of the audiologists and the ear, nose, throat specialist. And if you have any other questions, I'm ready to answer uh, right away. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Uh, this is Nabil al mutasib the director of the UT Health Audiology with the UT Medical School. And I hope that the information you heard was useful for you and your friends and family members. And uh, I appreciate this opportunity again for Memorial Herman to allow me uh, to explain some of the facts related to hearing loss and hearing aids and amplification and communication. Thank you and have a great day.